So from us in a point of view, I don't think uh, uh, it has reached the point of critical stage. Maybe after this presentation, after more and more credible uh, evidence that come out uh, through this uh, uh, debate, Bob own analysis and additional uh, um, uh, evidence. And I think there's a lot more evidence that DVB got. Uh, I was told that uh, DVB got the whole uh, computer belongs to uh, former General Kin Yoon, you know, the whole secret file. So they are looking at it because there are thousands and thousands of pages of uh, a document that still need to uh, interpret uh, and uh, analyze. So having said that, and I think um, this lead me to another important uh, issue. It's one thing to talk about being a nuclear power. It's another talking about using nuclear power. As you know, uh, six ASEAN member countries have expressed more or less directly or indirectly to use uh, nuclear power. So in a way, there is, uh, I think, the so-called nuclear energy renaissance within the ASEAN regions. Uh, just to give you a few examples, Vietnam also uh, decided to build at least two nuclear power plants, as you know, as the leading economic powerhouse now within ASEAN, so to maintain the economic growth. And in fact, uh, there's some indications that uh, within the next 30 years, the use of electricity will rise within this region 76%. So you have to use nuclear energy. Thailand also uh, is preparing embark on nuclear power's uh, option. Of course, you have the Philippines, which already uh, talk about nuclear power plants in Cebu, replacing the mothball ones in Bataan. And then, of course, we're discussing about Burma, the real nuclear uh, power options, and also the collaboration with the Russian, which we have discussed, and North Korea. Indonesia, you see that uh, increased discussion on the nuclear energy options in the mass media. And even Singapore, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Economics uh, Strategic Committee um, has also recommended that nuclear energy uh, should not be ruled out. It should be a long-term uh, option. So I think, in a way, taking all this together, uh, this nuclear energy uh, renaissance in our part of the regions can pose one of the most uh, serious nuclear threats, uh, nuclear threats uh, because of the uh, increasing list of the nuclear power plant accidents. And of course, uh, poor safeguards, mechanism, low standards uh, of treatments and uh, what's not storage of uh, radioactive waste. And these are the issue. And I have not mentioned, you know, the, even the, the theft and the, of nuclear fuel for terrorism. And as you know, the time a few years back, we also have an incident of uh, cobalt, you know, some of them trying to smuggle through Thailand. And you know, Thailand uh, being the transit point, have all kinds of illegal activities uh, and weapons transits uh, and other illegal uh, weapons. So having said that, I think, uh, um, I think it's very important for ASEAN to look at um, this issue give more importance to the peaceful use of uh, nuclear technologies and how to safeguard it. Without it, I think uh, uh, it will add on to what's not what the Burma uh, nuclear ambitions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kavi. So we now go to question, and there is a mic over there. Uh, I appreciate if you limit yourself to one question. Ask a question, not get into an argument. I'll have to cut you off if you do. And if preferably identify the speaker, you hope to fire your question to. Please, go ahead. Um, <coughs> Chris Pruden, Data Consult. <coughs> it's a question perhaps more directed to the chair. Uh, but I was a bit intrigued that the Foreign Correspondents Club can be so critical about Myanmar. And yet, when you try to have a meeting about Vietnam, the government bans your meetings. Uh, can you? 
add any logic uh, as to why we can hit at Myanmar with the big stick and yet we can't whisper in Vietnam's ear. Thank well, that's you. A, that's a question that probably should be answered by the Thai Foreign Ministry. Uh, so let's get to the next question. <laughs> Uh, Julian Penyazek, uh, resident in Northeast Thailand. I was intrigued to hear uh, Zani Man's, uh, in, in fact, all of the presenters actually, but particularly Zani Man, when, when you mentioned the, uh, um, the broad range of uh, weapon development that the Burmese regime are, are pursuing. And I, I wondered if, um, if you could expand some more on, uh, if that's possible, on, on what's going on. Um, and what their general intent is, please. Thank you. Um, briefly, um, it includes uh, you know, more high-tech um, weaponries such as middle-range um, missiles. And they, um, you know, some of the um, uh, research I've done indicate that they've purchased uh, Russian uh, missiles. Um, they've also um, you know, worked with uh, North Korea intensively over the past 10 years on like a, um, different types of tunnel construction. Uh, North Koreans have designed a three-year undergraduate course for the um, fresh um, DSTA graduates. Uh, interestingly, about 30 uh, uh, North Koreans who came as the, uh, the first batch or th uh, the first batch of teachers, they use the um, Russian as the language of instruction. Uh, so th imagine like you know next to Thailand or next to um, you know like uh, basically in in, in, um, in this region you've got um, a regime um, that um, that is producing people who are uh, conversant in, 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 in North Koreans and North Koreans deepening their involvement and and, and the rest just a uh, conventional weapon so I think that the two most serious um, uh, types of weaponry that they obviously are going for uh, one is that mis um, um, missile program that can be mounted with the uh, nuclear warheads and, and so you know these two are, are related are directly related programs nuclear and missile um, uh, factories or departments and, and the rest just uh, you know legit in quotes legitimate uh, conventional weaponry like next question so my name is Oliver Beansler from the German Embassy in Yangon so I know you only want questions but maybe you would allow two or three comments from my okay. side to what well I since heard. you have mentioned go ahead um, First of all, to Bob, I mean, first of all, thank you very much to, to your presentation. And um, you were right and when you said in the beginning that the German government was very suspicious about the machines to be exported to Myanmar. And that's why actually the, the end user inspections were arranged. And actually, there, there have been more inspections than what you mentioned, than, than the three. Um, all the evidence we have from those inspections are and that actually those machines are used extremely little, so not much at all which for us is an indication that there hasn't been much done with those machines. Maybe also the, the I'm not sure about the, the, the specific words in English about the using time, the time the machines were on, clearly shows to us that if anything done was with, that, with those machines was more or less training activities. Um, also what our people saw when they were there is that the people actually had not much idea about what they could do with those machines. So you could clearly ask the questions, why did they sell, the, buy the machines? And it's a good question. So we are not sure about that either, but from all the evidence we have is that those machines were not used for these kind of weaponry, what you said. Um, yeah, maybe, can I, can I have a, another comment to, to the second speaker? Could he could first, uh, let, let him answer the question. Yeah. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, my, my question to you is, uh, I understand that Trump, one of the companies involved, that their people said that there was very low usage of the machines as of uh, 2009, um, actually it was 2008 at this point, but the machines, according to our source, were used a lot after that time. W when was the last end user inspection? I mean, maybe you understand that I'm not here to, to completely um, have okay. the full amount of inspections J but just be sure that we, we we inspect regularly and and do that well okay and but I we, when, when yeah. you talk about the uh, those machines I mean the uh, the machines you talked about in those presentations are actually from from another company oh with, with the precisionary uh, the items we identified them in the report so yeah. there's no 
no secret there is Gildemeister, but, uh, but all I would say is that our understanding was that the machines were used a lot after the last inspection. But it doesn't take away from your point that they really don't know what to do with the machines. They're not using them to their full uh, ability, exactly. and whoever ordered those machines had no idea what they were doing. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Okay, next Maybe question. Uh, just two comments to, to the second speaker, because you also mentioned <laughs> some German items. I mean, when you talked about uh, companies that had actually fiber infrastructure into the, into the country and you just said it's a way to increase the, the, the competence of military communication, I was just wondering, all the in internet users in Myanmar, I think, are rather happy to have better fiber infrastructure in the country, not only for that. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, please let me say the other thing. You also had on the slide something about the, the company Fritz Werner from Germany, which you didn't say in your presentation. And I really strongly have to to argue against that slide because, I mean, on the one hand you said that there maybe have been visits of that company in Myanmar and I would tell you, I mean, there's an office of that company in Myanmar which is not a secret at all, but for over 20 years this company had, has nothing to do with any kind of weaponization in Myanmar. They're just selling very legally batteries and other machinery tools. So please be reassured that this company is active in Myanmar but has nothing to do with any weaponization. Thank you. Can I? Zani, go ahead. Yeah, um, you know, uh, before I left the country, I worked as a tour guide for a few years, you know, uh, to make connections so that I could leave the country. And I, I happened to have gone as the, uh, the guide for uh, Vice President of Fritz Wagner. And, uh, you know, his chief li liaison officer was a military intelligence officer with an engineering background. And they were involved in copper and gold mining uh, as early as 1984. And Fritz Wagner set up the... Uh, uh, the very first at weapons factories in 1958-59 and you know like I was told by one of your uh, uh, compatriots that Fritz Wagner is even by German standards is one of the most dodgiest country, uh, companies that they, he is ashamed of and I can give you the name of the guy you can verify the comment and secondly on the fiber optics line that the Siemens had laid as uh, surely like you know um, I was an uh, internet based activist and I uh, and I would support, like, you know, tourism in Burma. I would support expanding internet. I, when I went back, I met, um, I had three meetings with Lieutenant General Mien Sui, who replaced Kenyon. And one of the items that I pushed and I failed was the, uh, expanding the access to the internet for the people using the, you know, language of, in quotes, a patriotism. Um, I think if, if you, I mean, you may have flown maybe, like, later today or, like, you know, yesterday, but... As I speak today, I have received information from various sources that the Burmese military has shut down cell phone lines and internet uh, services in the country. And I, I bet the military headquarters and these factories are secu uh, you know, uh, able to use the uh, Zeman laid uh, infrastructure of uh, fiber optic cables. I, th I think, I think, no, let's... Just, just very quickly, I just, I mean, I just used my mobile phone this morning, so I mean, it worked. <laughs> but the thing is, I just wanted to say about Fritz Werner, I, it's not, it's what I said, over can 20 can years... We, Fritz Werner is pr peripheral, but peripheral but can to we, my comment. Can we, can we uh, have another question? Because we, we'd rather have yeah, open, open this to... Uh, look, I'm, I'm you can discuss it with Zani, we or we can have another round, if you don't mind. Uh, just a quick comment, what I, I mean, he didn't really... Um, no, so you can. You can have. A, we'll have another round. I just want to get a give a chance for others to ask questions. Please, please. Hang on. Yeah, there is Larry behind. Hang on. When we have another round, we can get more <coughs> questions. Uh, Larry Jagan, freelance journalist <coughs> and self-appointed Burma specialist. Um, Burma's ambitions uh, to be a, a nuclear power uh, is obviously not new. In fact, I broke the official. Uh, government position back in 2002, February 2002, when Winong uh, said that they were going to buy a nuclear reactor from Russia and it was for medical isotopes. Uh, and, and the next plan would be uh, to have uh, nuclear power. Um, Robert, I wonder, given what you've seen, what you've talked to uh, uh, your defector, is it possible that that's actually what they're doing? That, that, that it's nothing more than, than uh, civilian use of nuclear energy. Um, and, and, and I always cheat. Um, the Indians always tell me the difference between civilian use of nuclear power and the military use of nuclear power is very vague. Is that true? That, that actually the, 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 the overlap is, is indistinct? Bob? The answer to the first question is no. 
<laughs> no, Larry, uh, seriously, uh, they could go out and buy this reactor if they signed the additional protocol for $10 million, and they wouldn't need to invest $100 million to do the same thing that they can't do very well. They, they have to do everything.